Hey everybody, thanks so much for clicking on this video. Today's vlog is another vlog pertaining to the return of cruising. So excited. Um, we, If you haven't already seen uh, my previous video pertaining to cruising, we have booked a cruise on the Carnival Breeze for August 12th. So you will see a series of videos upcoming pertaining to preparing for the trip as well as the new protocols that are going to be in place uh, since uh, resuming service since the pandemic. Now, I'm super excited. Uh, if you all have been keeping up uh, with the cruising community, you already know that Royal Caribbean has successfully completed its first uh, cruise uh, back uh, and it was a fully vaccinated cruise, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, with the exception of children who did not qualify and they had to be tested. Well, actually, the vaccinated had to be tested as well. Um, if you flew into the Bahamas, which is very likely unless you were a Bahamian resident, you had to test to enter into the Bahamas. You had to test the day of boarding to uh, actually embark on the ship. And then they also had to test again to be cleared from customs to get off of the ship and then uh, to go to the airport to return to your various destinations. But that's Royal Caribbean. I won't go um, into all of that because some of Carnival's protocols may be um, a little bit different than Carnival's. Um, but I did want to take the time to read an email that I received pertaining to August sailings. It's an uh, operational update email that we got and I'll read it to you verbatim. It says, Dear Carnival guests, we are excited ab uh, about getting to welcome you aboard your upcoming cruise in August. We know you are awaiting more details about pre-cruise and onboard protocols and procedures, and we want to thank you for your patience while we finalized our plans. Our have fun, be safe protocols and procedures have been designed to maximize the health and safety of our guests and crew while delivering a fun and memorable vacation experience. It says, please take note of our have fun, be safe guidelines we expect to follow. Guests, including children who are age eligible for vaccines, will need to be vaccinated and show proof of vaccination in advance of boarding. As a reminder, fully vaccinated is defined as receiving the final dose of a vaccine at least 14 days before embarkation. For your reference, any vaccine approved by either the uh, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, a World Health Organization who meets this requirement. According to current CDC guidelines, vaccinated guests on your sailing will not be required to wear face masks or physical distance while on board. However, masks are required at the cruise terminal during embarkation. It says vaccinated guests may participate in carnival sponsored tours or independent activities we are in the process of finalizing our tours and expect more availability to be added in the next few weeks. Please check back on Carnival.com by the end of the month. All guests are required to follow the protocols and requirements for each destination while ashore. These restrictions are under the control of local government and are subject to change without advance notice. We encourage you to come prepared for potential requirements ashore, which may apply to health screening, testing, masks, physical distancing, distancing, excuse me, organized tours and independent activities, etc. And a know before you go email will be sent to you the week before selling with additional information on embarkation related matters. Please watch for and read that email carefully as it will be specific about your vaccination verification and other details. So not applicable for us to hurry up and get uh, vaccinated. We have been vaccinated since uh, mid -fe completely vaccinated since mid-February. So that's all taken care of. Um, we did that for numerous reasons, not only um, vacation purposes. Uh, so we're all set with that. Um, with this particular cruise, we are doing an independent um, excursion. We're going to go to Mr. Santos. Uh, we've been once before. We had a fantastic time. Um, we're not worried about um, there being any concerns with being there. I'm sure they uh, have their own protocols and safety measures in place uh, for us once we get there. Um, I have learned from watching other 
cruise vloggers that uh, Cozumel does require you to wear a mask. Um, and I'm quite sure, of course, that's not applicable when swimming. And then, of course, um, eating and drinking, which we're perfectly fine with. We'll have masks anyway, um, you know, for embarkation and debarkation as well. Um, so I'm excited to see uh, the first sailings are going to begin. Carnival Vista's first sailing is leaving out of Galveston on July 3rd. Um, I believe Carnival Breeze is starting on the 10th. Don't quote me on the breeze. And the Horizon is supposed to set sail from Miami on July 4th, I believe. So those are the first three that are coming out of the gate. Um, so I'll be excited to see um, anyone that uh, does vlogs for those particular sailings to see what's implemented in the type of protocols that they have um, for the July sailings so that we may prepare for our August sailing. Um, I have heard that Carnival will implement the um, the mobile um, muster, muster drill, which I am super excited about. I used to get super annoyed with having to be crowded like sardines for the muster drill, depending on where yours were. You know, some were more comfortable depending on the ship. Some of them were in like the theater and stuff like that or in the dining room. And then other play, uh, other cruise ships, you literally had to go buy the lifeboats and have your drill. And you're sitting there like this. They're taking forever to start because they have to call names for people to think that they can miss the drill. So if they are going to mock how Royal has done, um, you watch safety videos on your phone. Um, you acknowledge on your phone that you watched it, and then you'll have to go still to your muster station for them to check you off on their um, the carry around iPads. Um, I guess they'll swipe your card or something like that. So again, I'll be interested to see um, what Carnival specifically is going to do. Um, John Hill, which is the ambassador for Carnival, also uh, made a post about they're going to allow 5% of unvaccinated guests to join on these sailings for July and August. And that 5% is um, children under the age of 12 who do not qualify for the vaccine and some adults who do qualify, but for some medical reason, uh, they cannot uh, receive the vaccine. And there's an application process and Carnival, you don't automatically just to be uh, get to be a part of that 5%. Carnival will notify you after you request and apply to be a part of that. But uh, John Hill, the uh, Carnival Cruise Ambassador, did make a post um, saying that unvaccinated guests will be offered options for Carnival-approved bubble uh, tours as self-guided or independent exploration is not allowed in many destinations. And in the event are approved bubble tours are sold out or canceled by weather, unvaccinated guests will have to remain on board. Um, and private ports of call, such as Half Moon K uh, and Princess K, unvaccinated guests may participate in carnival approved tours or independent exploration. Uh, and he said, my colleagues in the shore excursion department are working on these bubble tours for all uh, the Caribbean ports. And for all vaccinated guests, uh, there will be more excursions added uh, for you to choose from too. Uh, and they will have them on the website as soon as possible. And when they're added, he will let everyone know. And as always, he thanks everyone for their patience. So Carnival is really um, taking all of the necessary steps to uh, get us ready to be back uh, sailing and to be as safe as possible. Some of the other half fun be safe protocols include if you are oxygen dependent or on dialysis, you are not allowed to cruise for 2021. The crew, although they are vaccinated, they will still be required to wear their mask at all times. With regards to the buffet, there will not be any self-service. There will be crew available to provide you what you want off of the buffet. I know I've seen a lot of comments where people weren't happy about that because they feel they won't get the 
uh, the quantity that they want, but you can ask them to put on as much as you want on your plate. It's just that you won't physically be uh, in front of the food as well as using the utensils. For the ships that have bonsai teppanyaki, that will be closed starting out for July and August. Um, you do sit close together and you do um, sit for a, a show while the um, chef is preparing the food. So they feel with sitting in uh, close proximity that you will uh, not be able to have the full experience with um, social distancing and also being uh, close with people that may not be in your party. They are reducing the visits to your room. There are a lot of perks that the platinum and diamond guests receive that require the room stewards to go into the room to deliver, um, such as the chocolate delight and the platinum and diamond gift um, and things of that nature. So those will be loaded to your sell and sign card, and then you can go retrieve those at different locations at your leisure. There will be no faster to the fun or priority boarding. So what they've done with that is check-in for all cruises has now been pushed um, back to 14 days prior. Um, before COVID, you were able to check in anywhere between 60 to 90 days before your sailing, um, depending on how long uh, your cruise was. So now it is 14 days. But what they've done is they are allowing the platinum and diamond guests to check in 16 days prior, which gives them the opportunity to uh, have advantage to pick their arrival time two days earlier than non-diamond and platinum guests. There will also be a health assessment that needs to be completed. Uh, originally, the bookings were saying that you would complete that three days prior, but um, those who are beginning to sail next week um, have begun to see those much sooner, and you will have to provide your proof of vaccination. For the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines, the, they do require two doses. Uh, with Moderna, it is uh, 28 days apart, and with Pfizer, it is 21 days apart. And with those, you have to have that second dose two weeks prior to sailing. And uh, for those who have received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, that is only one dose, but you do still have to have that vaccine completed at least 14 days prior to your sailing. They will be looking at uh, the dates uh, with regards to your proof of vaccination. Um, so it is important to make sure that you follow those rules so that you are not turned away at the embarkation port. I hope that all of this information has been um, very informative for everyone. I'd like to thank everyone for clicking on this video. Before you go, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And a part of the comments, let me know what you think about these new have fun, be safe protocols. Um, do you think that they are well overdue? Um, and what else do you think that they should implement um, in addition to what they've already put in place? And again, thank you so much for watching this video. Until next time, bye.